Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we're doing our Thursday night instant reaction like we've been doing. And this one's a fun one, Jeff. Uh, Carolina, Houston. <laughs> Have a great time. Why? This is where Thursday night starts to like, sometimes it's like a... Thursday night football gets its bad reputation. It's games like this. And I mean, nothing against the Panthers. They took care of business, but it's just not a fun game to watch. I'm telling you, there's not much. And then Christian McCaffrey gets hurt, which just kind of ruined the day, I would say. So let's start there. Panthers win, right? That's not a surprise. But Christian McCaffrey goes out, hamstring injury. Um, Kind of worry about that. Hamstrings just don't heal up very quickly, usually. It's not just like you get a hamstring injury and, oh, you're back to go next week. You sh- it doesn't always happen like that. And they ruled him out, like, right away as soon as he was in that tent. And then, it, like, he didn't even actually leave the tent for – it was, like, 20 minutes after he was already ruled out. It was weird. Just laying there. I don't know, man. I don't feel good about this. He's going to be out a few weeks, it feels like, at minimum, the way it just looks right now to me. So – Christian McCaffrey owners, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a strange injury. I'm not exactly sure. They're playing Houston. They weren't up by that much when it happened. So the fact know, that he, so... he didn't give it a go or try to warm up, I, I don't know. It's a I, We'll learn more in the coming weeks, but I'm kind of with you. The way that they took him out right away, I do think that he's going to miss a little bit of time. I mean, right now you can go out and get Chuba Hubbard, right? I mean, that would be yep. – probably the first idea that everyone's going to have the question is watching the game how much do you believe that Hubbard can produce if McCaffrey is out last year we saw Mike Davis do a wonderful job of of whatever (laughs) running the ball and trying to imitate McCaffrey no one is McCaffrey but Hubbard would he be worthwhile to put in your lineup say over uh I don't know where, where would he rank right away He'll be top 30, but that's as far as I'm willing to go with it. Um, I don't – I don't know. I don't know if I love the player. I mean, he he was decent in college. Like, he, I mean, he showed some things. Then um, his, well, his last season, it wasn't really as good. He kind of lost some of that, you know, potential value it looked like he might have. I don't know. He's probably fine. I don't think he's anything more than just like an average NFL running back. But I guess if you get the volume that Christian McCaffrey gets, that makes you just valuable no matter what. Cause I don't think Mike Davis, honestly, I'm not a Mike Davis fan. I haven't been a Mike Davis fan and he was able to do all good things in fantasy with the volume he was getting. So if that's how they play it and he gets the Christian McCaffrey volume, you know, he'll be good. I mean, 11 for 52, 4.7 yards to carry. He's, you know, perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but in, in three catches for 27 yards, that's pretty good numbers. So it doesn't really necessarily matter if I think he's that great of a player, if he has all that opportunity, He's going to be a, he's a worthwhile start, especially if you had McCaffrey, if Hubbard's on your bench, you put him in. I think you're going to, obviously it's not McCaffrey, but you know, the volume is probably going to be there. Cause who's going to, who's going to challenge him for that? Royce Freeman, I think is the next guy up. I don't, Royce Freeman's not going to challenge for this, right? I mean, that doesn't seem the Panthers last year, they used Mike Davis and in, in, mm-hmm. McCaffrey out. They just didn't use anybody else. So, I mean, he probably starts my first week in the ranks if he's the guy in the top 30 and then see what it is. But I can very well see him becoming a top 20 guy just on on what he, the, the volume he's going to receive. And, yeah, you know, he seems good enough, right? Good enough. He's not yeah. great, but he's good enough. I kind of I hope that he, he does more than I think he's going to do. I, I'll be quite honest. I think that the Carolina's defense is legit. I am, you know, without McCaffrey, their offense is, I don't know, maybe – average yeah (laughs) i'm i am i am completely not on board with uh thinking that darnold has completely you know retooled his game very good for him they started three and oh i don't want to take anything away from that but if we're talking about a a carolina offense without mccaffrey it's it's very very different hubbard will because of the the amount of carries he should get he'll do just fine he's definitely worth picking up um, I don't I don't think this changes the offense all that much, to be honest. I don't think you can try to force feed the ball to DJ Moore anymore. I don't think that you try to have Darnold set the world on fire. So I think that Hubbard will get carries. I think he will get yep. catches. So I, I do agree with you when it comes to that. Um, yeah. Speaking of Darnold, 
Uh, he had, I mean, he did have a good game because he was able to rush two touchdowns in. He had 304 right. yards passing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I've already said that I don't believe in him. I'm not going to be using him, even though he's had a really good start of the year. How do you feel? Am I am I off on that, or or do you share my skepticism? I mean, I think he's he's playing better than he was with the Jets. Obviously, right? He's more a little more under control. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> I I don't think they're going to use him in a way that makes him too fantasy relevant at this point. You know, I just don't. I like I said, I don't think this offense is going to change much from what they were doing. And really, at this point, he's just throwing the ball to DJ Moore. And that's all he's going to do. The touchdowns weren't there. Obviously he ran those two. And I don't, I just don't, I, there's not enough for me to trust him in a lineup. Um, if you're in two QB league, sure. Obviously then he's fine, but it's going to have to be this. And this is one of the better matchups you're probably going to find for him, right? There's not going to be much better than Houston and he didn't throw a passing touchdown. So I, you know, he's, he's, he's going to do the, he's good enough for the team. I just don't, there's other options in fantasy for me. There's, other really like streaming type options. Like I want to, I want a Daniel Jones ahead of him, a Teddy Bridgewater ahead of him, Kirk cousins ahead of him. You know, those kind of guys are all going to be ahead of him. So I just don't see in a normal 10, 12 team league where he becomes relevant to you. I just can't see that quite happening. So, I mean, he's fine. He's, he's good enough. So, I mean, he's good enough at least to make DJ Moore have some good, good work. Right. So DJ Moore, um, I lost my number. So DJ Moore there, eight catches, 126 yards, pretty, pretty solid, game for DJ Moore, who has clearly become the number one target for Sam Darnold by far. But the thing with, um, I guess with DJ Moore, which we're seeing again, he doesn't catch many touchdowns. That's always been the, that's always been what stopped his fantasy value. Um, rookie year, two touchdowns, second year, four touchdowns, third year, four touchdowns. This year he has one in three games. That is why his value doesn't jump up because the, the catches he's getting, like this is a kind of season you'd be like, wow, he's going to really, you know, I think he has 22 catches on the year and 270 some yards. So very solid numbers. If you had a couple more touchdowns in there, it's like, wow, this guy's awesome. But not the touchdowns, which you never know when they'll come. It's There's no guarantee. He doesn't have a history of it. So that's the one thing that just holds him back. That's yeah. Uh, and he came up. A little with a limp as well. We'll see what. Yeah, he did. I, I think that he came back, about. but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, he, he did play, but we'll see if anything comes about it. Yep. Uh, and the thing that worries me about DJ Moore because he's he's overproduced what I thought he was going to do in this offense with Darnold. Um, and if you're playing in a PPR league, especially, he has quite a bit of value. He's yeah. you know he is good. Uh, and it's great to see that he was able to build on that, get over a hundred yards because before it was about 80 yards and then he caught a touchdown against new Orleans, but the three teams they played so far, I thought that the saints might've been a good measuring stick. We found out that they're a little all over the place right now. So if you start with the jets, the saints, and then Houston, I'm, I'm still waiting to find out whether or not these numbers are real. It, it does feel like they're going to give him a ton of targets. So I think I, I'm not saying that he doesn't have value. He absolutely does. But I, I do wonder if the year is only going to get rougher for him, especially if they don't have McCaffrey as well. So I, I don't think this game with everything that transpired helps his stock rise at all, even though he had a really solid game. Um, and, and it's more of the team around him. He, he kind of falls into the, that category of, of extremely talented wide receiver in an offense. I just really despise. So yeah, that's kind of where he, he falls at the moment. And I, I couldn't agree with you more when it, when you talk about touchdown upside, it has been, unfortunately the, the situation he's been in. And I don't think this year is going to improve that at all. Um, I'm, I'm kind of more surprised. There's no one else that, that rose to the top in this game. They, you know, Houston doesn't have a bad defense, but they also didn't get anything going on offense. So well, you had plenty of opportunities to try to do something yeah, and, and so get more people involved. Speaking like that is Robbie Anderson. What like you can't start that guy. He's what do you have? One catch for no. eight yards today? Is that what he had? Yeah, and they um, only targeted him twice. Yeah. So his opening opening game, he had one catch. It was a 57 yard touchdown, right? In the first game. So that looked a little better. Only off three targets, though. Game two, he did have six targets, but three catches, 38 yards. And then this game, you said two targets, one for eight. I mean, there's better options off the waiver wire right now than that. I mean, I don't know if I want to tell you, if I'm going to tell you to drop Robbie Anderson yet. Like, that might be going a little too far, but it's not too far off at this point 
Yeah, I'm it's close. I'm pretty it's close, about yeah. I'm about one more week from telling you. Okay, I know the potential he still has, so I don't want to just say that outright yet. But give me one more week of him not doing anything. Yeah, put him on the waiver wire. It's, what's the point? This is a guy that was bought. He's like still ninety one percent owned in ESPN leagues, which is pretty good number. And he was more than that before. Not good. I don't. It's weird because you thought you would have thought, oh, the Darnold Anderson connection, right? That was what you thought. But maybe he, Darnold comes in there's like, oh wow, I got a real receiver in DJ Moore. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I never had this, and that's what happened. So I mean, Ter- Terrace Marshall Marshall outpaced um, uh, Robbie Anderson here in this one. I think he had four catches, forty eight yards. So he, the, you know, the rookie's looking a little better. He had five targets. So I don't know. Carolina, interesting. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, just came through the uh, Matt Rule, Panthers coach said uh, McCaffrey has a strained hamstring. Doesn't know the severity of it yet. Doesn't so no one's. It's it's a strained hamstring at least. Um, at least they didn't just come out and say he tore his hamstring or something like that. See what that means. But that's the early word. Doesn't really tell us much yet. So. Houston side of things, um, Davis Mills gets a start without Tyrod. I feel bad for Tyrod, still do. Um, Davis Mills, I mean, I think he played about as good as we could expect. Uh, you know, that's pretty much uh, if this number is this seat, the game is perfectly fine for Davis Mills. He's not a fantasy option whatsoever. He's not going to be a fantasy option, but he was good enough to keep Brandon Cooks as a fantasy option, which is the absolute only thing you will care about the Texans for this year is Brandon Cooks and literally nothing else. You do not need anything else on this team. Brandon Cooks, nine catches, 112 yards, gets 11 targets. That's 11 targets off 28 um, throws. So that's pretty good number he's getting there of, of these targets. And he, he's, that was our worry without Tyrod. Can Brandon Cooks still become relevant? No touchdown, but touchdown went to Anthony Miller, which I kind of forgot about Anthony Miller until I saw him catch that (laughs) touchdown, but Brandon Cooks is still going to be relevant. This shows it. But that's it. That's the only relevance on this team. That run game is atrocious. I'm just telling you, that run game is bad. And it's funny because a couple of like five, six, five years ago, I'd be like, David Johnson, Mark Ingram on the same team. Back to a lot. That's awesome, right? Ingram, six for 21. David Johnson. David Johnson is just completely washed. Two for 11. He's he's done. Yeah, it, it, that whole thing, I mean, it looks bad. Houston, I mean, they have, oh. they have a, a win on the year, so good for them. But yeah. um, yeah, without Tyrod, I mean, you can you can tell Davis Mills. Yeah. I actually I thought it was a very he's fine. Yeah, it was a legit start. Like he did he did exactly what they asked him to do. But it was definitely the the training wheels were on, and yeah. they are not a team that if you can't try some stuff, they're not going to get anything done because you like they're not going to pound it out. They can't run all over you. They can't. They don't have enough weapons on the outside to really stretch you deep. So. It turns into this. Uh, Brandon Cooks is able to get open, and when Mills has time, he'll hit him a little bit, but that's about it. They had one good drive at the end of the half uh, where they scored the touchdown. Um, yep. Yeah, so, I mean, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can predict from this, but um, I don't know. How do, you, how do you view Brandon Cooks? Say Davis Mills is going to start the next couple of weeks. We don't mm-hmm. – I don't exactly know how long Tyrod will be out, but – um. How do you view him? Because right now, Brandon Cooks, I know this sounds bad and, and probably sacrilege to a lot of people, but, uh, I mean, he's he's DJ Moore. He's, I mean, he, I know a lot really, of people yeah. like DJ Moore better, but, I mean, they have pretty much the same exact numbers. They're kind of in the same situation. Yep. I'm, um, I mean, Brandon Cooks, like, I think I lowered him a little bit in the ranks this week, just not knowing about the Davis Mills factor. I think he was, like, around 30 for me. So he, he's definitely top 25, probably closer to 20. And just he's a wide receiver three, I would say. I'm still, like, going to say wide receiver three, close to wide receiver two. But you, he's a very good wide receiver three, though. He's one that you feel really confident in, just he's going to get you some numbers. But he's close to that wide receiver two back end mark at this point. But I'm going to put Brandon Cooks in my lineup, and I'm going to feel comfortable with it. That, you know, maybe maybe the bad game happens. It very well could, but he's shown me enough so far that he is the only player they can throw the ball to. That's it. It's just him. So I feel pretty good about it. And like you said, Carolina's kind of doing the same thing with DJ Moore. You know, there's not a lot of passing offense, but it's all going to DJ Moore. So I feel good about both of those guys. Um, DJ Moore a little bit more because a, a better quarterback and a better team. But that's, that's about it. Um, Brandon Cooks is literally the only fantasy relevant player on that yeah. team, though. That's it. All right. But before we get out of here, I actually had a couple. We had a couple listener questions come in. Um, oh, good. They, they emailed us. Way better so than this I, game. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to get to these guys. They, they, they emailed us at fantasyfootballprofit at gmail.com. So I want to get them in here. 
Um, so if you guys have any questions for us anytime, send us over fantasy football profit at gmail.com. We'll try to get to them, especially next week. Um, every Tuesday night, we record our mailbag show and it comes out Wednesday. So email us your questions, um, you know, starting Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, if you want them for week four, we'll get your questions on that show. And also Instagram.com slash fantasy football profit. If you don't follow us there already, but here we go. Just a couple quick questions. We got Kyle Peterson. He says, looking for advice on starting a quarterback this week. He says his options are, so he's a stream, he's streaming. He's, he's doing what I'm doing this year. So I'm right on board with you, Kyle here. Teddy Bridgewater versus the Jets, or do you go Daniel Jones versus Atlanta? Kyle says, mm. I'm leaning towards Jones as he gets the extra rushing yards. Um, but he says, Jones has had some duds over the years. Thanks guys. And love the podcast. Um, yeah, Bridgewater, Daniel Jones. I'll just say it before I decide what I actually like here. I will say I am actually starting Daniel Jones this week in our main league that we talk about. Daniel Jones is my starting quarterback, which I did not think I would ever say, but Daniel Jones is my starter and the extra rushing yards, the potential there. I do like that. Teddy Bridgewater has been pretty solid though. He plays the jets. That's a, it's a good matchup. He's, he's probably less likely to give you that dud. I would say than Daniel Jones is right. Daniel Jones, good match against the Falcons though. So where are you going here though? Bridgewater Jones. I, I like Jones as well. I can't believe I'm saying that because I'm not a Jones believer, but um, I think both of those guys are, are very worth streaming this week. I think yeah. the matchups definitely help you out. And yeah, Teddy Bridgewater. I like, I like what he's able to do. And especially with Sutton, um, but I think Daniel Jones with his running ability going against Atlanta, which I don't believe in at all. Um, I think he showed some promise on maybe, um, you know, and we, I don't think we've seen them at full, full strength yet where I think Teddy Bridgewater, that is what you're kind of hoping that he's going to do. You're going to hope anywhere from like, you know, high 200s, like a 280 yard performance with two touchdowns. That's what you're hoping for. At least Daniel Jones can, he could match that, especially if Galladay caught a, a, a deep ball or, or got into the offense. And really, you're hoping that he continues on the rushing tear. If he gets in the end zone rushing, you know, I, I, mm -hmm. he will probably have a better output than than Bridgewater. It's a little bit of a risky one, but yep. I would take the upside with him because Atlanta is, you know, I, I think he can do it against them. Yep, I'm going to go with that. Um, Jones is definitely the riskier play. It's slightly riskier. I get that, but I think it has higher upside. And I, I. I'm going to go for it. I'm going for it this week. We'll see how it plays out. So I'd, I'd go Daniel Jones. I'd be fine with Bridgewater. He's pretty, he's going to be consistent. I'm not, nothing wrong with that play. Either of these plays, if you want to feel, if you just want to be safe, you just want to have a little safer option. Bridgewater is probably your guy. If you want to have a little upside, go Jones and I'm going to go Jones. Yeah. Come on. Be brave. I'm going Jones. I'm, I'm doing it. So, all right, next we have one more question from Mike Westerlin. So he's looking, um, this is gonna be a trade question. Basically he's looking to possibly trade Damian Harris to get Mike Williams. So he says, I don't like trading a running back for wide receiver when they're equal, equally ranked at their position, but Harris has, and this is half point PPR says, but Harris has no receptions and is touchdown dependent. If Mike Williams is for real, then he could be a more consistent flex for me. What should I do? So essentially Harris is his flex at this point. If he's going to play him, um, his other running backs are Austin Eckler, Antonio Jones. So Harris isn't cracking that those top two right now. Right. But what was which, his, what was his other what was his two uh, running back Eckler and Gibson? Which oh okay okay yeah Gibson, so essentially Jones and I was like what um oh yeah so yeah Eckler and Gibson are I was looking at this right he has Marvin Jones on his team too so. oh okay that's why he said Antonio <laughs> Jones and I was like who no, is no, Antonio guy? Jones is or Antonio Jones Marvin gotcha. Jones is his current flex actually right now. Um, it, would oh, okay. be, it would be Mark well, in this lineup and Damian Harris is the other option. So would you trade though Damian Harris to get Mike Williams? It's half point PPR. He said, you know, they are close in what they probably do and what their ranks. Is that something you think you're going to do? Or would you rather have that Damian Harris? So he, I'll say he also has um, Kareem Hunt is another one of his backs as oh, well. He does. And so he does have Kareem Hunt, but then it's Sony Michelle and Cordell Patterson. Um, yeah, wide receiver, I, I think it, it, I'll say, it, so wide receivers are Hopkins, uh, lamb, Marvin Jones is probably his third at this point. And then, um, da -da -da, let's see if there's anybody else here. No, that's about it. Marvin Jones yeah. is his third. Yeah. I don't have any issue with that. I think, uh, I think you have enough depth there, especially with hunt who mm -hmm. I would think would get 
start getting better. And then um, Cordero Patterson, where it's kind mm-hmm. of the the dark horse is like, is he going right. to be the the next best thing in Atlanta? We don't know, but at least he should get carries and, and in a tight spot, you could play him right now. So Damian Harris for Williams. I am completely okay with that. I think Williams is a good person to target. I would agree with him that he's mm-hmm. getting the targets. He, he could be a, a definite touchdown threat. And I think his upside, especially in the half point PPR is slightly higher than Harris. The only yep. reason you wouldn't do that is if, you know, running back is harder to come by. So if, if he was his third and that was all he had, I would stay pat with Harris. Mm-hmm. But I think but, having Kareem, I think Kareem Hunt makes this easier to do. Mm-hmm. It really does. And the fact that Marvin Jones, while solid so far, is not who you want as your third receiver. No, you know, Williams, like Williams, I like, I like that potential. I feel like it might be coming through. Like this guy's had this potential for years, right? It's always been there. And like maybe it's actually shining through enough for two games that like he looks like a legitimate top receiver. Like I said, I think I said the other day, if like, if you didn't know anything about this team and you just watch those first two games, you would think Mike Williams is their, their top receiver and Keenan Allen's just the extra, you know, the, the second, the second guy there, Mike Williams looks the part right now. And I, you know what? I take that chance. I think we, okay. We both like Damian Harris, right? But I think we know Damian Harris probably has a limit where he doesn't have this much. His ceiling's not like unlimited. He's a good running back. He just doesn't have like this massive ceiling. Mike Williams could it. I'm not so I'm not sure that he doesn't have a huge ceiling yet. Like maybe it just all comes together this year. It's, it's possible because he, he has a good quarterback. He has another good receiver opposite of him. It all it is good running. It is good offense. It's a good situation. So I'd pull the trigger mainly because you have hunt. I don't feel as I don't, I'm not worried as much. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah let's I go for it. All right, there we go. Yeah, so again, if you guys have any questions for us, fantasyfootballprofit at gmail.com, instagram.com slash fantasyfootballprofit, youtube.com slash fantasyfootballprofit. We'll find all the places. We'll get you. So that'll do it. Talk to you guys Sunday night.